Scattered across this great country are automotive treasures, collector cars owned by top enthusiasts, rare gems of rich pedigree. We invite them all to come to Auto Geek's Garage and show off their proudest vehicles while we get to ask, what's in Auto Geek's Garage? Now this is right up my alley. Man, this is a screaming machine. Hey, welcome back to a new episode of What's in Auto Geek's Garage. My celebrity guests this week are Bruno Massel and Matt Steele. How you doing, Bruno? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks for having me. And we got Lance Sedillo over here. Hi, Mike. Hey, how you doing, Lance? Oh, pretty good. Looks like you brought us a 1941 Willys Coupe. Yes, I did. This thing's bad. Oh, thank you very much. Now, this is right up my alley. I was telling Mike, I'm a drag racer, so I, when you rolled in here, I, just listening to this thing you know, made my whole day. Awesome. It's shaking the air. <laughs> yeah, man. You can feel it, you know? Cool, cool. All right, so big blower up front. Yes. What is this? What, what's uh, underneath the blower? It's a 671 blower with a 454 Chevy, big block. Sounds good. Looks good. Oh, thank you very much. Now, is this is a project car you guys are working on right oh, now. Oh, yes. What is the end-all, be-all of this thing? Is it going to be a race car? Is it going to be a show car? What are we looking at? Daily driver, run around town, get some groceries, pick the kids up, whatever you love to do. Run down the strip. Now, 41 Willys is a car for me that goes way back because back in the, the drag racing days, the pro mods, the 41 Willys, you've got legends like Scotty Cannon, Shannon Jenkins, big nitrous motors, big blower motors going 240 miles an hour. I can kind of see where this could go. You okay. see what, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Put some big slicks of Willy bar in back. Oh. <laughs> She's ready to go after that. Now, this thing isn't going to be a race, a race truck, but it's going to have a little bit of power under the hood. But inside, though, you can really see where this thing's coming about. A lot of the interior makes it a nice show vehicle as well. Oh, yes. I did a lot of work in Come this show. Come on, show baby. me what we got on here. Sure. Yeah, my race car doesn't look like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it could. <laughs> now, the upholstery, well, tell me about a little bit about the process here. All right. Um, when, the, when we started, it was just a bunch of gauges and running around town, make sure everything works. And then I started fabricating. It took me about three months. I threw some Italian spinning back leather inside there. It looks really good. Blue is something that's always been you know, home for me. I had a lot of blue race cars, a lot of good luck with blue race cars. You know what? I'm not really good at the painting, though. You know, <laughs> this, is, this is where I go out of my album. This is where this guy comes into play. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, I think I saw a mark on here. I don't know if you'd seen it or not, but. A little imperfection, Mike. What, what do you think? Lance, the, the finish on this actually looks really good. Uh, are there any imperfections at all? Uh, yeah, there's one little scratch up here. I think it might have happened when we put the car in the garage and the tennis ball might have hit it. Well, that's, that's it? That's the only thing wrong with the entire car? That's all I can see, Mike. Okay. Well, you're right. Uh, now that you've pointed it out, there is a small scratch right up here. You know, a lot of times I like to do everything by machine. Okay. okay. But sometimes when you have a very small defect just like this, it's actually easier just to go in there and work it out by hand. Now we have a smaller footprint. Okay. okay. But the problem most guys have when they go to remove a defect by hand, especially on a modern clear coat because they're pretty hard, is they don't use the right technique. So let me share with you the technique for removing a defect by hand. Now, whenever you're working on a clear coat, because the clear coat itself is scratch sensitive, you want to use either something like this. This is a microfiber applicator pad or a foam applicator pad. Now, since I'm going to try to remove a scratch, I want something with a little bit of bite. So instead okay. of using soft foam, I'm going to use microfiber. Now, the next thing you need is you need something that has the ability to abrade the paint but not leave any scratches in at the same time. And that comes down to the abrasive technology. What I'm going to use for this is the Pinnacle Advanced Swirl Remover. And normally I use this by machine, but you can use it by hand too. You always want to shake this up really good before you use it. And one of the reasons I like to take out defects like this by hand is because I can actually exert a lot of pressure with just two or three of my fingers pushing down on this pad and again keep my footprint down really small. So there's the scratch. Now watch this. Now this is a technique I always call putting a little passion behind the pan. A passion behind the pad. Because you don't just come up here and just spread around. You need to get in here and work that. These, these clear coats are hard. And you want to work that right across the scratch, usually like a 90 degree angle. And again, the microfiber is going to give the abrasives, the diminishing abrasives, and the pinnacle advanced swirl mover a little bit of bite, more bite than the foam. And then after you rub that in really good for right about a minute, go ahead and stop, get a clean microfiber towel, and then come back and just gently wipe that off. And if the abrasive technology is good, you won't leave any scratches behind where you applied it. Just like that. There. Scratch gone? Oh, yeah. 
Okay. Beautiful. But we're not done. The next thing you want to do is, of course, put some wax on okay. there. But that's how you take out an isolated defect out of a clear coat finish. Oh, excellent. Now this car is perfect. Thank you. You know, I gotta tell you something, Matt Steele is really missing this. I don't know where he's at, but this, I think I'm taking home. <laughs> well, he's missing the boat on this car, that's for sure. <laughs> What's in Auto Geek's Garage is being brought to you by Meguiar's, Meguiar's car care product since 1901. By Lake Country, pioneering manufacturers of buffing and polishing products sold worldwide. And by Minzerna, the world's finest polishing materials. What do the following award-winning car designers and builders have in common? Chip Booth, Brian Fuller, Alan Johnson, Justin Padfield, Mark Stilo, Steve Stroke, Denny Terzich, Troy Trepanier. They all depend on ARP fasteners. Leading car builders depend on ARP fasteners, and so should you. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. The best looking cars on the road deserve only the best when it comes to car care. Pinnacle Natural Brilliance. Pinnacle Sovereign Pace Wax is all natural. It uses ivory carnauba wax to create a sizzling shine. Pinnacle literally has a product for every square inch of your car. For more information about the entire line of Pinnacle products and for some valuable tips and techniques, check out PinnacleWax.com or AutoGeek.net. So it's a Suburban. Well, it's a Suburban, that's what they call them now, but back in 1949 when they made this thing, it was a, called a Chevrolet Carryall. Ah, uh, practical, makes sense. Yep, yep. I gotta say, this thing really looks good. But you know what? I bet you're not gonna sell many two-door Suburbans these days. It just doesn't seem practical. Well, now they're all four doors, you know. But the, back then, that's all they had was two doors. And they had three doors, but they didn't do three doors till like in the late 60s. But back then, you know, like I said, all the way back, uh, they made Suburbans in 1935, but they were all just two doors. That's it. And wow, then, 35, it goes that far oh, back. Oh yeah, yeah, you so know, they're I'm making thinking, Suburbans in 35. You know, these big gas guzzlers didn't start till 10 or 15 years ago, you know, with the Suburban moms driving over people with them. But <laughs> yeah, it goes no. back quite a ways. 35. Yep, <laughs> no, th it. this thing looks really good. I like the red paint on it. And to be honest with you, I like the look of it with just the two doors up front, you know, but this thing didn't come this way when you got it. It was oh, pretty rough. No, no. It had, uh, it had been beat with an ugly stick. That's what <laughs> I say. It was just all faded white and had a couple of real ugly red and blue stripes on it. And it, it just needed a lot of help. A lot of help. So, yeah, we just took it apart, start taking stuff off of it, taking it apart and sanded it all down and had it painted up and, you know, just went from there. Then I had a guy do the interior, kind of match it, kind of go with the rest of it. And, yeah, turned out okay. Now, underneath the hood, what are you using for power? It's got a 350 Chevy, small block, just the, the normal street rod deal. 350 uh, turbo transmission. Uh, GM 10 bolt rear end with a highway gear, so it's a nice cruiser. So it's, it's nice and simple yet powerful. It's something that's going to be able to live, be serviced easily, and, and you know, get the job done. And cruise down the road. Now, interior wise, you know, it's pretty nice inside here. It's not too overstated, but it kind of matches the whole theme, what you're going for. Yep, and enough room to take the whole fam damnly. And anything <laughs> else you want to load in there. Well, you go around <laughs> the back, this thing's got a unique feature that you don't see often. You know, I've seen the big barn door, you call them, I guess. Yeah, that's what most of them are. Most of them are barn doors. The panel trucks and the Suburbans and carryalls, they mostly came with the barn doors. But this one's unique in that it has the clamshell door. So it didn't make a whole lot of them with the clamshell door. It's kind of like a station wagon. That, that part goes up, this part comes down. They call it a clamshell, which, you know, makes sense. Well, I like the way it looks, and I like the way it turned out. You know, but the thing is, we'll find out what the expert likes. You know <laughs> what I mean? The color red really pops for me. Yeah. Well, you're certainly not going to miss this driving down the road. Nah, it shows up. Yeah, so you had this thing painted. Tell me about that. Well, I had it painted, uh, had it all sanded down, painted, pulled the fenders out and everything so you get paint down in there, but had it painted with enamel. And then when I got it back from the guy, it had a lot of texture in it. So I had another guy that I know uh, uh, wet sand it and buff it. And then uh, that was about it. You know, it, uh, and then this is how it turned out. It's not, 
Yeah, it's got some little stuff in it and stuff still that I'm not really perfectly happy with, but you know, looks good. How about I show you how to take all the swirls out and put a true show car finish on I here. like that. Okay, what I have over here are some products from Inzerna USA. And this is the step that usually most shops they skip, okay, because uh, they're under time constrictions. But what they skip is the part where it actually takes out all these swirls left by the wool pad and the compound that pulled out the sanding marks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Minzerna SI-1500, and this is basically a medium cut polish, okay. It's not quite as aggressive as a compound, but it's got a lot of bite. And I got a foam cutting pad on here, and all the guy had to do to finish this out the right way is just to do this step, okay. So we're going to turn this down. And it, it isn't any harder than that either, you know. And these use diminishing abrasives. What they're going to do is they're going to start out aggressive. They're going to cut out all those scratches and swirls up behind. And then they're going to break down as you're polishing so they don't put their own scratch in. And when you're done, look at the gloss we're going to leave behind here. Now look at it, Mike. How does oh, that wow. look? Yeah. See how clear that is? Yeah. Once you take out all the swirls, see the swirls and the scratches make the paint hazy. This has all the potential to have a really deep, dark, wet look to it, except for those, the haze caused by the swirls and scratches. So you pull those out and you get the finish you always dreamed of. Cool. That sounds good. Now the next step would be to take and switch over to a less aggressive pad and a less aggressive what we call a finishing polish. Okay, so now so each one of those pads of different colors are, are a different like texture. Yeah, they're different in their aggressiveness level. So okay. this is filled. This this is actually pretty soft. Oh, okay. Okay. Then I've got the SF 400, 4000 over here. And this is actually what we call an ultra fine polish. And again, this is a step that most body shops, even if you go to a custom painter, they're going to skip this step because it takes more time. But this is the most important step because this is the step that really amps up the gloss. And again, it's just this easy. Spread your product out first. Turn the speed up. Okay, now watch this. Again, this is kind of what we would call show car polishing because it is the extra step and a lot of shops skip this step. But I think you'll agree, when you got something as big as this and as beautiful as this, that's what you want out of a show Ooh. car finish. Wow. And then you put a coat of wax on it and that protects it. Hey, that's it for this segment. We'll be right back though, check it out. Cool. Whether you're an automotive enthusiast, professional detailer, or body shop technician, the secret to the perfect shine is machine polishing with Lake Country pads. The key to a flawless show car finish is matching the right pad to the job, and Lake Country has a pad for every detailing project. Lake Country is the industry leader in product development with over 60 years of hands-on detailing experience. When you're ready to machine polish, buy the best Lake Country pads. AutoGeek.net has everything you need to keep your vehicle looking its very best. Mothers, Meguiar's, 3M, Pinnacle, just to name a few. In fact, AutoGeek carries over 60 brands with thousands of unique items. The expert staff can answer any question you have about any product via email, discussion forum, live chat, or by phone. The selection is huge, the prices are low, and they ship it right to your door. It couldn't possibly get any easier. AutoGeek.net, we are car care. Every time you touch your car with a chamois, microfiber, or towel, you scratch the finish and remove the wax you just applied. Think it's dry? Guess again. The Master Blaster dries where no towel can reach. Now you can dry your car or motorcycle twice as fast with no effort, no scratches, and with no water spots. Truly touchless, the Master Blaster is the quickest and safest way to dry your baby with warm, dry, filtered air. Made in the USA. Dr. David Gaddusi, president of Optimum Palmer Technologies, is a PhD organic chemist who helped create the clear coat paint technologies used on cars today. If he can make the paint, take my word for it, he's more than qualified to make paint care products for your vehicle. Optico 2 is a permanent paint coating that you can apply yourself and it won't wear off like normal car waxes, so it will last longer and thus protect longer. Check out OptimumCarCare.com.
It's time now for Off the Shelf. Quick tips on detailing your car with Mike Phillips. And brought to you by McGuire's Car Care Products. This week's email comes from Jeff in Connecticut. And Jeff writes, I love detailing my own cars and even family and friends cars. But when it comes to cleaning the wheels, it's hard to find a product that cleans both wheels and tires. Well, Jeff, McGuire's just brought out a brand new product called their Hot Rims All Wheel and Tire Cleaner. Now, this is a great product because it uses their extreme clean technology together with a foaming sprayer. And what this does is it allows the product to cling to the tire and the rim where it'll go to work instead of dripping down on the concrete where it's not doing anything for you. So what you want to do is come in here and spray this down really well. And this is perfect for working on factory coated wheels like we're working on here today. And then you want to use the right brush for the part you're going to be working on. Now for the face of the wheel, I'm going to come down here and just agitate this to loosen up that brake dust and the road grime. And you can see the brown just starting to peel away off that tire. Then for the tire, I'm going to use a tire brush. Just come in here and give this a light scrubbing. Get behind the spokes to come in here and just use a specially brush for that. And after agitating, give it a strong blast of water. And that's the quick and easy way to clean your wheels and tires with one product. Mike, I am digging the front end on this car. This is awesome. I always love these old Studebakers. You know that bullet nose right there? It's iconic is what it is. Oh, it stands the test of time. Very you know? unique. Hey, uh, where's Bruno? About that, I think I heard him tearing out in that 41 Willys that you guys conveniently forgot to tell me about, Mike. You've got to tell me about these things. Hey, uh, Bruno told me to keep that from you. Uh, rule number one, do not listen to Bruno, all okay. right? Rule number two, see rule number one. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. So rule number one, don't ever listen to Bruno. Yeah, exactly. Got right. it. We'll got be good it. with that. So this is a great replacement, though, no doubt. Hey, I've got the owner. It's Mike Myers. Hey, how you doing, Mike? This is a classic 1951 Studebaker Bullet Nose Champion. How you doing, Mike? All right, Mike. Matt Mike, still. good to see you. Good to see you Thanks again. for coming in with this thing. This is gorgeous. My pleasure. Mike, I know you're going to have some fun with this in a little bit, right? Yeah. But we want to have some fun too and maybe take a look at it. Check it out. Right? Check it out. Mike, look, I've got to look at the front end on this thing. First of all, I wish I could go back in time in the time machine, right? And look at this and see the people's faces when this bullet nose came out. They must have looked at this thing like, what in the world is that car? It was one of a kind. Yeah, exactly. So is that what drew you to it? Are you a Studebaker guy or how did this all? Studebaker and Hudson Hornets. Yeah, yeah. Like I was telling Mike or somebody coming over here, uh, when I drive over from the garage over here, you can't believe the amount of thumbs ups and the horns beeping uh, just driving down US 1. Now, <laughs> tell me about some of the things, because if you're not familiar with these at all, it's really got this kind of like an airplane look to it, from the bullet nose to the hood ornament, and the whole look goes all the way to the back, right? Well, she's very sleek. She's three-speed overdrive, and believe it or not, it gets about 30, 31 miles of the gallon. Does it really? It's a flathead, 120 cubic inch, 70 horse. It had fuel economy before that was oh, cool. Oh, way even, before the right? government. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we've got the vents on the side here. They channel right into the cab, right? Right, right yep. in there? Yep. Now take a look at this. This is another thing I like about this, the suicide doors right here. Now, the years on this, right, you know all about this. It came out in 48, and I think they quit the suicides in uh, 52. Yeah. But uh, Ford had them back in the uh, late 30s, early 40s. I don't believe Chevrolet ever had it. Just pull it hard. There you go. Oh, you got some new rubber on there, too. Oh, yeah. You have been doing some <laughs> It's work all on brand this new thing. rubber. And now we have to I, Slam I can't shut it too hard, right? <laughs> Boom. Mike, I think it looks beautiful. I can't find anything wrong with it. But you know, my buddy here, he <laughs> operates on a whole different level. So he's going to pick it apart a little bit, but he does good work. So okay. I, I mean that in the nicest possible way. OK, Matt. <laughs> well, you know, we had this car here about two weeks ago, and it came in a swirled out, scratched up mess. When I taught Mike how to machine polish, we removed all the swirls and scratches. But I can tell by the fingerprints and smudges back there on the paint and on the front, you've been taking this to car shows, haven't you? Yes. And you know people can't resist walking over and touching anything that looks shiny, can they? <laughs> okay, what I want to do today, we didn't do this the last time here. This is something kind of cool. I'm going to show you how to machine apply a paste wax. Okay? So what you want to do is you take your paste wax, and if you just give this a hard knock, look at that. I knocked the wax right out of the container. I'm just going to take and make a few swipes here. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna machine apply this. And the cool thing about this, when you have a black finish that has a flawless shine on it like it has here, the last thing you wanna do is get any kind of pressure points from hand applying a wax. So when you apply wax by machine, you get equal pressure over the entire face of the pad, no pressure points. I'm gonna machine apply the wax, but I want you to share with everybody something I showed you, and that's how to wipe the wax off wearing microfiber gloves. Remember that trick? Yes. Okay, so watch this. This takes all the work out of it too. This wax just glides over the paint. Okay, now this is the Pinnacle XMT Series 180 High Gloss Carnuba Paste Wax. Okay, no cleaners, it's a true show car wax, and that's all we have here is a true show car finish. Another cool thing about this is you don't gotta let it dry. So you can walk right over there, and then just carefully wipe that wax off. How easy does that come off? Very. <laughs> Very easy. It just glides off, doesn't it? Yes. And the microfiber gloves, what's cool about that is they give you grip strength over the microfiber, okay? So it doesn't like fly out of your hand. A lot of times you go to wipe a coat of wax off, you're moving your hand this way, the microfiber towel stays there, your hand goes the other direction. So this just takes all the work out of it and it makes the job a whole lot easier. Plus, if you want to touch the paint and rest on the car, you won't leave any fingerprints anywhere. You did a good job putting it to work. That's <laughs> my favorite part. <laughs> hey, we're going to be right back. Keep going. What's in Auto Geek's Garage is being brought to you by Optimum, Accelerate, into the and by MetroVac, deliberately made better in the USA. And by Ragtop, exclusively formulated for fabric and vinyl tonneau covers. Matt Steele here for Ragtop. You know, I love convertibles and soft tops, but we've all seen what can happen when they're neglected. Ragtop Convertible Protectant is the only way to protect that soft top and keep it looking brand new. Now, here's the best part. It's as easy as cleaning the top and spraying it on. Ragtop will not only maintain the new appearance, but it offers UV protection and the water will beat up and roll right off. You can purchase Ragtop at AutoGeek.net and other authorized dealers. You ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. Let's get out of here. For a lot of us, the automobile is the second biggest investment that we make. Now, one of the best ways to protect this investment is with the entire line of Wolfgang car care products. Wolfgang Fusion uses German engineered super polymers blended with ivory carnauba wax for long lasting protection with a three dimensional crystal like shine. For more information about the entire line of Wolfgang car care products and time saving tips and techniques, check out WolfgangCarCare.com or AutoGeek.net. Amazing results, even in full sun. Now go have fun. Hey, we're back here in Auto Geek's garage, and I have my special guests, Matt Still and Bruno Massel. <laughs> Where's Bruno? I don't know. That's the question of the day. And honestly, if I had a dime for every time I asked myself that question, I could buy a couple of these nice cars laying around here. You know that? Yeah. Hey, speaking of nice cars, check out this. It's a 1997 Miata, and I have the owner right here, John Dunham. How you doing, John? Matt, nice John, to you. nice to meet you, too. Hey, it's all good. Hey, we appreciate you coming in. Now, John, let's take a quick look at some of the work, because... You might see this out in traffic and just think it's a regular Miata or if it's sitting there parked, but there's a lot more to it, isn't there? There is, there is. I built this car myself. Right. Uh, it's, like Mike said, a 97 Miata. The color is the original Montego Blue from Miata. I put the roll bar in it from uh, Hard Dog Fabrication. Um, her shifter, just some gauges, autometer gauges in it. Um, Interior is pretty much how it was. It, it is the basically part. stock, yes. Now, from up here and forward, there's where the issues lie, right? Now, we've all heard of the, the big guy on a little bike. This is like the big engine in a little car kind of thing. Let's talk time frame. What are we looking at? 
Uh, it took me about six months of Saturdays to build this thing. Um, the hardest decision to make on it was whether to take a perfectly good Miata and take most of it out right. and put a lot of nice stuff back in it. I think you made a good decision. You know, I hear guys talking a little bit. They mention this thing might be a sleeper. And that's if it's off and you're not hearing it rumbling because this little sleeper will wake you up and it's going to do that with this. I feel this is awesome. Let's take a look. Hey, Matt, look who finally arrived. It's Bruno. Bruno, thanks for joining the party. You couldn't wait for me? No, dude, we got stuff to do. Where have you been? Well, think about it. You've got a blown Willys and me. That's Gas. It. We ran out of it. Yeah. Well, you both ran out of it, did you? It has nothing to do with that concrete block you've got for a foot. No, but you know what? It looks like I came in just the right time because I could run this thing right out of gas yeah. quick. <laughs> this is your style. Hey, John, keep him away from this thing. This I is will. about as close. Oh, There's like a restraining order for Bruno in this thing. Thanks we, for the warning. We've got like four <laughs> extra cylinders up here, John. What are we looking at? Uh, we're looking at a 5.0 Ford block. It's a roller block. It is board and stroke to 347. It has uh, eagle crank and rods, Keith Black pistons. Uh, GT40 tubular manifold, a uh, lot of fuel injection stuff, 30 pound injectors, mass airflow, throttle body. Lots of crowbars to get this baby jammed <laughs> in there. That's and what it's, it screams <laughs> practicality. That's yes. what I love about it, you know? And who cares? It doesn't matter when you're rolling down the road like this. This is great. Hey, you know what? I think Mike's getting ready to do something. Why don't we go check it out? All right. Well, I'm getting ready to make a big mistake. How many times? Is someone out there going to ready to machine buff their car and they're using a large pad like this and they're trying to buff out a thin panel like this. That means the pad is going to be buffing on the edges and that's bad technique. Right. Our friends at Lake Country have a complete selection of four inch diameter pads and these things are perfect for these small thin panels like this. That way you don't have to worry about buffing through the edge exposing the sheet metal underneath. And Lake Country makes a complete line of these so you can match the right, not only the right pad type, with the right pad size. In fact, if you look at this gas tank right here, this will fit right inside there, and I can buff out the entire thing and never be on an edge. Same thing back here on the spoiler. I can even drop this down. If you look around the back here, I've got a bumper. That's another thin panel. So it's all about choosing the right pad and the right size pad for the panel you're bumping out. Hey, that's it for this episode, but we'll be back next week. Looks good, Mike. John, you good to go out for a ride in this thing? Oh, yeah. Let's go out. Wait, wait, wait. I, I thought I was You trying. need to stay out. Listen, There's restraining gas for everybody. All products featured on today's program are available from autogeek.net.